One fine pensic morning near end of the war, the armies assembled with banners before. With chanting and shouting they took to the field, determined to fight till their enemies yield. The first battle went to the East Realm's great might, but men of the dragon attained the next fight. Twas one point to each as men looked at kings, and pondered the harvest that regicide brings. But now was confusion twixt vassal and lord, the allies conspired to have their reward. Not two hosts, but three, had gathered to fight. There stood the east, resplendent in might. As giants in spirit our men took the field, and each bore the tiger on banner and shield. In front of the forest King Conrad stood tall, his banner held high by no commoner thrall. But Princess Althea, the heir to the queen, a more fearsome pairing there never was seen. And there stood the mid-realm, the dragon arrayed, row upon row with their banners displayed. King Luter looked out from the midst of the host, certain he'd soon drink a victory toast. But there in the north, a third army mass, their duties neglected, their friendships recast, for all had been allied to East Realm or Mid, and all turned their backs when their presence was bid. King Anton of Kalantir stood at the head of armies assembled from men who had fled. Three armies gathered on Pensick's green field, determined to fight till their enemies yield. The battle horn sounded, the armies charged forth, the east and the mid sallied up to the north where Kalantir stood with its allies around, and three armies crashed with a deafening sound. King Anton looked west to see tiger attack, from eastward the dragon breathed flame at his back. No host can withstand the combined mid and east, and Kalantir cringed as its numbers decreased. In barely a moment the host was no more, and King Anton's banner was cast to the floor. King Conrad regrouped to continue the feud. King Luter was eager the fight to conclude. The brave eastern warriors with gleams in their eyes, and men of the dragon with harrowing cries, charged forth into battle and into the fray. But still one surprise shook King Anton that day, for as he looked out to see armies collide, shields were discarded and swords cast aside. Kings Luter and Conrad embraced on the field, and neither would pressure the other to yield. Two monarchs retired from battle as friends, and showed that some actions will history transcend. The East and the Mid-Realm are enemies, true, but each gives the other respect that is due. When traitors abandon their vassalage ties, the tiger and dragon together arise.